Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited because I have a day off today. I thought I would take you along with me. It is kind of a self-care, take a break, take a breather kind of day. It is a Wednesday. It's like 8.20 in the morning. I have a hair appointment today. That's usually what I like to go do <laughs> my days off, schedule my days off on a day that I have a hair appointment so I don't have to feel rushed or have to go like super late at night. And then I also need to go to Hobby Lobby and I thought it would be fun to go to Home Goods. <laughs> And who knows where else that is kind of the general the general plan today And I just thought it would be fun to do a video. I haven't done one in a while. I miss you guys And so here we are spending the day together. My hair appointments at 10. I think I have like four hours Scheduled in her chair today. I am trying to go back blonde which is Gonna be a process no matter what because I don't want to damage my hair So it's definitely going to take some time. I think to get there. I don't know what we'll be able to achieve today I don't think I'm gonna come out fully blonde today, but at least get there and I know she'll make me look good I, I really trust my stylist, which is nice I also have been trying really really hard to take care of and embrace my natural texture I'm not even gonna attempt to say what type of curls or waves I have because the curl police is real <laughs> and I don't want to get it wrong. I know I have different types of texture in my hair. I've got some like loose and defined waves. I have some looser general waves. I have some actual ringlet curls. It's a whole thing. But I have just been really inspired by watching some like curly hair TikToks and YouTube videos lately and finding creators who really embrace their natural curls as well. It's kind of revived my desire to keep on this journey. I really want to get some layers put in so I can have a more defined and like rounded shape up here as well as my bangs. I really miss when I got my hair done like totally redone last year. I actually had bangs and they've since grown out but I really miss, I think I looked really good with bangs. <laughs> So I'm gonna get my bangs back. They're gonna be curly. I'm here for it. Some face framing pieces, maybe a little bit of trim. We'll see, I have some time with her. I'm gonna bring my Kindle. It's gonna be a lot of time in the salon today. <laughs> I'm trying to get mentally prepared for it. Yeah, and then Home Goods and Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby, I have to get a couple of things for a craft night coming up, hosted by my friend Summer. I'll talk more about that later. And then I just thought, I mean, we've got to go to Home Goods. We've got to see what Halloween things are there, if any. I have gotten some really cute Halloween stuff. And if I get any more, I'll do like maybe a mini haul at the end of this video. But okay, let me go pop in my contacts and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I had to change my shirt too because these lights are hot. Anyways, okay, let me put these back so I can put on some makeup. I don't really want to put on a lot of makeup. Honestly, I have not really been feeling makeup lately in general. Like, Sometimes I just feel like my face looks better without a lot of makeup on and so I don't really like to wear a lot of it right now. It's also summer and it's hot and it all sweats off anyway so a lot of me is just like what's the point? <laughs> Speaking of summer, it's been such a busy summer for me. That's honestly mostly why I haven't been making videos. I know my limits a lot better now than I did when I was on YouTube like full time, quote unquote, maybe not full time, but like where I would post a video a week. The amount of burnout I felt when I was doing that was insane. Especially in the summer, while I would love to capture, you know, all of the stuff that we're doing, I find it absolutely exhausting to want to capture, like have a sincere desire to actually like capture the moments. I love posting on Instagram. I love updating stories and all that stuff on like what we're doing. But to do that plus YouTube, plus like want to make a TikTok video, plus like just be in the moment, like it's just overwhelming. And I know I don't feel my best when I do it. So I haven't been making videos just because honestly I have been burnt out. I have also been really back into the Enneagram rabbit hole. My company as leadership team they all got to take like the professional really robust enneagram tests together and then also we had like this more of like a life coach she's got a lot of like credentials and stuff i don't think she's a therapist but she's more of like a life coach slash like enneagram expert she works with like a lot of ceos and like executives and stuff like that to foster like holistic well-rounded people um it was a really interesting approach anyway so i've been back down the rabbit hole of Enneagram because we recently retook the tests and talked a lot about our Enneagram types. I feel like I'm back a little bit more in tune with like knowing 
my needs, which is something I struggle with because I'm a type nine. <laughs> so I've been trying to be really mindful of like, being kind to myself and also knowing that it's okay for me to have needs and actually meet those needs. For those that aren't familiar with the Enneagram, it's basically kind of like a personality test, but I, I feel like it's a lot more than that. It's a lot more robust than just being like, oh, you're an introvert and you're an extrovert and that is what it is. It helps you kind of identify skills that you have that are really strong and really beautiful and also areas where you could grow and areas where you're maybe lacking to put in like some self-work. It can be a little painful because like none of the types necessarily are good. You can definitely be like an unhealthy version of the type that you are. There's types one through nine. My type, for example, number nine is the peacemaker or the peacekeeper. Type nine's value as like a core motivation, keeping peace, <laughs> having peace, being peaceful. And while that in and of itself sounds like such a wonderful attribute to have, it actually is quite selfish because nines hate conflict so much that we'll go to any length to absolutely avoid it. To the point where we can honestly start manipulating situations just to avoid that conflict. And it comes across like we're keeping the peace, but you have to have conflict. And life. You have to be able to go through it. You have to be able to navigate it. And there's a healthy way to do that, but type nines just don't want any part of that. A lot of times it comes at a detriment to themselves because what happens is nines become so in tune with everyone else around them that they forget about themselves and they forget about their needs. And when you're forgetting about your needs, you're not showing up authentically. You're just not. And I know myself well. <laughs> And I don't show up authentically when I'm forgetting about my needs. And this summer, I have been really like trying to push myself in so many extroverted ways and so many ways that kind of go against my sort of like comfort zone. And while I think there's an element of like a lot of goodness to that, there's also like an element of like, oh, I hit my limit like three weeks ago and I'm still forcing myself to do this and I don't know how to say I can't do anymore. That's why I'm glad I have days like today, self-care days, where I can really just focus kind of on myself, on sort of just like doing things that bring me a lot of joy. Because yeah, I've been, I don't know, I've been sort of just struggling with feeling sort of like in tune with myself lately. And so I'm, I'm trying to kind of get back there, slow down. One other thing about this Enneagram kind of test that we took, you saw all of your results as far as like scores for each type. For example, my type seven and eight are the lowest scored. My highest score was actually a two. That's a little bit hard to understand, but a lot of times nines can mask as twos. But my very second closest highest was a nine. And yeah, it, it's very frequent that like women especially will look like twos, but they're actually nines. So I know I'm a nine, but it was also interesting to explore that two sort of side. And then I think my third highest was a six, which makes sense because nines go to six when they're in stress. But the thing that surprised me the most was that that my next highest was actually a four. Not only did I score high as a four, I also was very familiar with each part of the four. Okay, this is probably getting really confusing for those that are not familiar <laughs> with the Enneagram, so I'm really sorry if you're like, what are you talking about, Zoe? So each type borrows things from two other types on the Enneagram. I'll post a little photo over here, depending on if they're kind of like healthy versions of themselves or like unhealthier versions of themselves or like in times of stress. Type fours are the individualists, which <laughs> I'll get into that in a second. Type fours borrow from the two, the type two when they're in stress and then the type one when they're in growth, which my last highest was a one. I actually scored high in all areas of the type four, which that's called like sort of this like triad. The way she explained it was that like, when that happens, you've had experiences in your, in your life that have kind of had to make you really familiar with all areas of sort of this, this type. I wouldn't say it's special, but it's just like worth noting that you've sort of had to be like at some point in your life so self-sustaining or just so familiar with all areas. The type four is the individualist, which means they are very 
sort of creative, highly emotional, highly sensitive, unique, at their best, they can offer different creative approaches or perspectives to things. At their worst, they become like too introspective, too in their feels. <laughs> And I was reading when we were going over the descriptions of fours, I was like, oh my gosh, that feels like me to my core. Like that feels like Zoe when she was growing up or Zoe in high school. I'll never forget when I said that, she looked at me and she's like, this might be worth exploring more. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. I also have been thinking a lot about just those traits in myself, being sort of this like creative person, just like a younger version of myself where I did like the weirdest stuff <laughs> and I did it very purposefully. Like I didn't care about fitting in. In fact, I did not want to fit in. I wanted to be the unique, <laughs> different person in the room. And I lost a lot of that when I went to college. That is when I really wanted to start blending in and conforming and not drawing attention to myself. And that's when a lot of insecurities really crept in. I miss the bold traits that I know are within me. I miss the creative kind of unbound whimsy that I know lives within my soul. I think that I have been able to express that in places that feel really safe to me. One example is like in my home. I like to have a lot of color and a lot of things that make it feel full of personality, but there's just so many areas in my life where I still am so scared to take those risks that feel organic for me. So I've just been thinking a lot about that and I've been thinking about ways to sort of embrace my desire for creativity and artisticness <laughs> and uniqueness and being okay with that and not being afraid of it and not shying away from it. And also like just really honoring this like very emotional and sensitive side of me. I am incredibly emotional. I am incredibly sensitive. I have done a lot of work in therapy now to be very secure in those ways, but I still in a lot of ways hesitate to sometimes embrace that in moments when it does come out and actually use it as sort of a superpower instead of being like ashamed that I'm crying or ashamed that I'm feeling. Yeah, so I don't know. I've just been exploring a lot of these kind of like different ways of who I am and what I feel like I bring to the people around me, I guess, and, and myself. It's been very interesting. This has been Enneagram Chats with Zoe, <laughs> as she's only halfway done with her makeup, because <laughs> I can't do two things at once. Anyway, I'm going to finish getting ready and I'll check in in a second. All right, I don't know if you can see. I'm wearing, I'm wearing a dress today with some Nikes, because <laughs> I wanted to be cute, but I also wanted to be comfortable and this is like one of my favorite dresses. It's from Ava and Viv from Target. I think it was like two years ago I got it. I love it so much. We are off to my appointment. Wish me luck. I hope it goes well. Oh. Hello, I'm back. <laughs> Here she is, a lot more blonde. I got bangs again. I have to get used to it, honestly. The bangs are a little short, but that's also because they're like curled. And I mean, I'd rather have them a little bit short than a little too long, because otherwise that means that they'll just grow out faster and I'm not gonna see her again until like October. But yeah, here I am. It's it's a little bit of a change. I'm, I'm like looking at myself in the viewfinder and I, really thought I would just like snap right back into it, but I've been red for so long that I'm a little bit like, oh, who is she? <laughs> it's a whole different vibe for sure. I like it though. And I just love like, I love like having bangs again. Like look how cute updos are with bangs. I asked her to style it with my natural hair. That's always a bit of a challenge. I totally understand why. I know how to style my hair. I know how to get it the most curly. I know what it takes. And I've never, ever, ever had an experience where, like, my curls have just looked amazing coming out of a salon. So, like, this this is good. It's cute. It's fun. But I know I can make my hair curlier than this. So I'm really excited for when I can like take a shower and do my curly hair routine and see just like, I mean, I know she trimmed it. So it's like healthier. It's going to feel good. Sorry, I can't stop playing it with it. And I'm like, I keep like looking at myself in the viewfinder, like adjusting my bangs. 
Anyway, we are at Hobby Lobby now. I am really excited because my friend Summer, she's here on booktube. She's got an Instagram. She's amazing. And I know I talked about her before, but I just need to reiterate that if you enjoy my channel, you will enjoy her channel. <laughs> Not that like we're the same, but she also evokes just like a lot of like cozy vibes and does a lot of like fun hauls. She's very creative. You'll just like her. Like, just trust me. Her link is in the description. Check her out. Anyway, I adore her and she is doing a live show craft night on Friday, which is in like two days. And she's going to be taking us through how to make these really, really cute macrame like rainbows. I'm so excited. And so she like posted a list of the things to get. So I'm here at Hobby Lobby. Hopefully I'll be able to pick up everything that I need to do my little macrame rainbow. So that's what I'm here to get. I'll report back and hopefully, hopefully I get the things. But yeah, we're gonna go in and look for some fun crafts and hopefully I don't get sidetracked by the home decor and everything else because it's Hobby Lobby <laughs> and I will. <laughs> well, that was interesting. <laughs> they had so many things happening in that store. First of all, the whole thing is turned around. It's like completely opposite from what it used to be. So I had no idea where anything was. Then in every single aisle, like I'm not even exaggerating, at least every other aisle, was an employee like stocking tons of like things. So there's boxes everywhere. It was a whole maze. And then every time I tried to go somewhere, someone was coming. It was just like, not the vibe. <laughs> do you ever like get into a store and you're fully ready to like shop and do what you need to do? And then you get in there and you're like, I want to be literally anywhere else but here that's exactly how i felt so i got some things for the craft night but i did not get everything i'm just gonna order everything else that i need on amazon as much as i didn't want to order from amazon i just like could not be in there any longer but what i did get from here was the yarn and that's like the most important part and what i mostly wanted to not get on amazon so i could see the colors that i was getting i ended up getting four different skeins of yarn and i got them in these pretty colors colors look at how nice they are this is like a really pretty mauvey kind of purple this is sort of like an off-white like a cream here is the mustard yellow and then the really pretty rose pink which is like one of my favorite colors and i think this little color scheme is so pretty for a rainbow so i'm excited about craft night and i just can't forget to get everything else that i need on amazon <laughs> so even though i am so hungry and probably going to regret this i really want to go to home goods while i'm down here i don't often come down to this part of town i haven't been to this home goods in a long time and the other home goods that I normally go to has put out Halloween stuff and I've already gotten a few things but I'm hopeful that maybe this home goods has some other stuff that I haven't seen yet I don't know I'm gonna go while I'm down here the next time I check in I will show you what I got if I got anything cross your fingers I would love to find something fun that's where we're off to next hello I'm home I was able to snag a few things so I'm excited to show y'all. I didn't find a lot. I had a very similar experience in Home Goods as I did in Hobby Lobby. The minute I got in there, I was like, this is why I hate shopping in this area of town because it's just so like, oh. It's like they just took everything out of their inventory and put it all on the shelves. So there is like no breathing room. Do not take small children into this home goods. It's like a trap of glass and breakables. You pull one thing off the shelf, everything's going down. It's just terrifying. <laughs> but I did find a couple of things. The first thing I found was this cute little ghosty. I thought he was so precious. I just love little ghosts for Halloween. This was only like six bucks. I don't love the black and orange vibe for Halloween. I really prefer like fun pastels. Because there's only a small amount of orange, I'm thinking that I'll actually paint the pumpkin and the stripes and the little dots. Some people may call me crazy for buying something just to paint it, but I think it would look really cute when I'm done with it. And then the only other Halloween thing that I got, I'm also considering painting. I know. It's this really pretty pumpkin. I don't know if you can tell, but it's like textured, kind of like a cable knit sweater, which is just so cute. I don't mind that it's white. I like the gold stem. I think it's really, really cute. It's very like cozy, but I kind of wish it was a color. 
So I am definitely contemplating also painting this. Maybe like a mint green or, I mean, pink or like a soft orange. I just think it would look so much cuter with some color. Okay, the other things that I got were completely random and have nothing to do with Halloween. Honestly, this is one of the most random home goods hauls I think I have. <laughs> I got some gold ribbon. Love this, it's so pretty. I am such a fan of home goods paper things. Their paper plates, their napkins, their gift bags, their wrapping paper. I saw this and I thought maybe I could use it for the craft night, but if I can't, I will definitely be using it for Christmas. Yes, don't come at me. I'm already buying for Christmas. <laughs> Okay, the other thing that I got is Parks and Recreation Trivia Deck and Episode Guide. Andrew and I and my siblings, specifically my brother Max and his wife Sharice, we all love The Office and Parks and Rec. Right now, Andrew and I are re-watching Parks and Rec and we have trivia for The Office. And when we hang out with Max and Sharice, we will often do like trivia or we'll just do like some kind of fun game and we were just saying recently oh we wish we had a parks and rec trivia <laughs> and i saw this in their little gift section and i grabbed it along with my love of their paper goods i also picked up these really stunning paper plates one of my like new favorite things right now is kind of stocking up on their cute paper plates because we love hosting people but I don't always love the dishes that come afterwards. <laughs> so having some cute paper plates is always fun to serve on. And I just, I mean, look at how pretty. The next thing I got, I was not planning on getting at all, but I actually did need these cake tins. These are like those, um, I don't even know what they're called. Spring form cake pans. They're pink and they're like, kind of like a textured looking pink. This like speckled, speckled white it's so pretty of course this side has a mark i did not see that earlier i made andrew a cake for his birthday this year and it was pretty good it was pretty good but a good amount of it stuck to our very cheap spring form cake pan that we did have from like the grocery store so these ones hopefully they look a lot nicer they don't have the same texture as the other cheap ones that i got and i think these will do the trick next time i want to make a cake okay and then the last things that i got i actually got a couple hair related things because the home goods was right next to a TJ Maxx. You know how they have their little thing. So I wanted to check out what kind of hair products they had. I got a couple that I'm really excited to try. The first one that I feel like I know I'll really like, it's this Carol's Daughter Hair Milk Curl Refresher Spray. I thought that like maybe I could use this for second day hair, third day hair, just when I'm needing like a little zhuzh. Other thing that I got was this day Cactus flower leave-in conditioner calms frizz softens and hydrates protects hair from breakage It's heat protectant as well. And I just I'm not gonna lie. I kind of liked the packaging <laughs> But I also really needed some leave-in conditioner and then the very last thing that I got I've never heard of this brand, but it had some pretty re good reviews online So I went ahead and tried it is TGIN quench three-in-one co-wash conditioner and detangler This is a product that I forgot existed a co-wash. I'm really excited about all three of these I hope I like them. Also. I put up my hair and I think it looks so cute up <laughs> Banks is up here sniffing out all the things that I bought Hey, say hi. Oh my gosh. She's getting so big Oh, say hi, wiggle worm. No, you don't want to? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, okay. Bing says hi. He is doing really, really well. We brought him to the vet, got all of his shots up to date, everything he needs. He's a nice, growing, healthy boy <laughs> who causes all the trouble. And he needs to definitely get um, fixed in the next couple of months. So that should be interesting. <laughs> Okay, what is the plan for the rest of the night? It's currently 5.15. I ordered a pizza because it's a self-care day and I wanted a pizza so badly. <laughs> and then honestly, I'm probably gonna like tidy up a little bit in the house. I like to kind of do that in the evening just to reset everything for the next day. And then I'll probably diamond paint a little bit. And that's been still so much fun. I am having the best time diamond painting. I love it so much. Okay, here we are in my office. It is 7.30 and I ended up eating dinner and then cleaning the house. And then I felt like working out. <laughs> So I just busted out a workout in my kitchen. It was really good, but now I'm like really sweaty. So please don't mind the tomato face sweaty version of me. 
It's been a really interesting journey reclaiming moving my body in ways to make it <laughs> sweat and my heart rate go up. I've tried to be so much more intentional this year with working out in ways and exercising, moving my body in ways that make me feel good. It's been such a journey and every time I do it, I feel like I break a little bit more away from some of those old toxic patterns. But yeah, so I just did a workout, which fits in really well with just like the self-care kind of vibe that we're going with today. I think the thing that I am also really enjoying lately is unapologetically taking up space, especially when I'm working out. I don't work out in front of anybody. I probably don't look <laughs> cute at all, but it's literally not about that. It's about me feeling like because I'm in the body that I'm in, I need to constantly shrink and be as small as possible in order to make everyone else around me more comfortable, in order to make me feel more comfortable. And that's a heavy burden to carry when you're around people, when you're around anybody, is just wanting to shrink and be smaller and take up the least amount of space possible. And there's something about working out and doing so in a way that is just unapologetic and free and moving your body and throwing up your arms and moving your elbows and your knees and kicking and punching and taking up all of this space. Like there's something about that that feels so empowering and it just reminds me that like I'm allowed to be in this world. I'm allowed to take up the space that I do. There's something about that that I have just really, really been enjoying lately. So if you're feeling like you want to step back into working out or if it's been a while, do so with a lot of self-love and compassion and in a way that has nothing to do with shrinking yourself, but instead the opposite, taking up all the space that you want and doing it in a way that feels really good. So that's all. This is the part in my evenings when I typically chill in my office. This is where we're at. Misha is here with us. Hello, Misha. <laughs> You're so cute. That is Misha's spot. And I usually sit here and I diamond paint for a couple of hours. And it's really nice. I have a, I have a really nice setup that I love. And I've got my diamond painting. <laughs> I am currently working on this stunning piece. Let me show you the sticker first because I mean, she is so cute. The name of it is Voyager and it's by the artist Carmen Lowe. Oh my goodness. Can you even like believe how beautiful that is? I am in love with this artwork. It does something to me. Like it literally moves me. I, I don't know how else to explain it, but I, I've had this one for a while and I've been working on it and this is how far I am so far. Isn't she beautiful? Oh my gosh, I'm like, so obsessed. She will officially be my first, my first diamond painting that I hang up. Look at how pretty she is. Ooh! I generally have been listening to a lot of audiobooks while I do these diamond paintings, which is also really nice because I've been getting a lot of reading done. July was the best month of reading I've had in so long. I gave like three books, five stars. It was so good. Speaking of diamond painting, I am definitely planning on a couple more diamond painting videos. I'd be curious to hear what y'all think. I have some more diamond painting kits that I want to do a haul of. I bought a thingamajig, a rig, a rigamajig <laughs> to hold up my camera so I can get hopefully better shots and have that just go so much better than the first one. But I have some really, really beautiful canvases that I wanna show off. And then I also, I got tagged in a diamond painting tag video. Oh my gosh, I love tag videos. And I love the diamond painting community because it is so small, you guys. Like, it reminds me of booktube back in the day when it was just a, such a smaller community. There's nothing wrong with where it's at now, but it's a really, really sweet community. So someone tagged me in a diamond painting tag video, so I kind of want to do it. And I want to diamond paint while I do the video and like answer the questions. So it will be me diamond painting while also answering questions about diamond painting. I don't know how many people will actually watch it, but I just want to do it. So I'm going to do it. The other video I was thinking about making was like a diamond painting for beginners or things I wish I knew before I started diamond painting kind of video because there are so many things that I have learned in the last couple of months since picking up this hobby. There are so many things that make it as enjoyable as it can be that I think not a lot of people know just by looking at it or trying it for the first time. 
I hope that makes sense. So I definitely have some fun like diamond painting videos coming up or at least I'm planning on it. I don't know how many views they'll get or like if you guys are even interested in that but it's something I'm really liking so I think I'm just gonna do it. And then I don't know what's up for future content. I'm thinking about doing another readathon in the future. There's some fun like fall ones coming out. I definitely would love to do like a decorate with me for fall when September comes around. So there's definitely things in the works. We'll see. I don't know. I'm just kind of kind of feeling it out doing things as I as I feel. That's kind of where it's at. I just wanted to say thanks so much for joining me today. It's been a really nice sort of reviving time for myself today. Just sort of spending time with me and doing things for myself. It felt really really good and I definitely I think achieved what I was hoping to today. I'm gonna go ahead and, and diamond paint and listen to my audiobook and just relax for the rest of the night. That is genuinely the plan. I'll do some b-roll of myself diamond painting to kind of outro the video but before I do that I just want to say thank you so much for watching and thank you for sticking around if you've made it this far. I know this was a little bit of a chatty vlog but I appreciate you and it means the world anytime someone watches these videos so thank you so much. If you haven't heard it today you are so loved. I love you. I appreciate you. I hope you're doing well, taking care of yourself, and I will see you soon in my next video. Bye. <laughs>